how's it going? I haven't had much time in the last, oh I don't know, six months to really do anything and frankly I don't have much time now, we're in the middle of soccer season, but I realize the year is escaping away from me at a high rate of speed and I really wanted to deal with this this year because in 1997 the Sun E10000, my favorite computer of all time, was released. Now even somebody like me with basic math skills can tell that that's 20 years this year. So I really wanted to do something with the 18 k So I've put the crate aside for now. And it's a relatively quiet Sunday. My kids are in theory cleaning their room. And my wife and her friends are uh, making salsa in the kitchen. Actually, they're lovely ladies and they're dealing with a couple hundred pounds of tomatoes out of my garden, so I'm fine. But means I get a couple minutes to myself. I have done a video on the E10,000 already. It is horrifically dull, but it gives a good backstory, uh, the history of the machine, who had it first, what led up to its existence, things like that. So I'm not going to go through any of that um, right now. What I will do is go over the machine physically, what it looks like uh, on the inside, things like that, and a refresher on how all the pieces work together in the theory of operation, because these are things that I've learned over the years that I didn't know a decade ago when I picked this thing up the first time I did that first video. I've had a heap of experience with the Sun 6800s, what was that, two years ago now? Uh, and those being the follow-on machine from the E10K, they share an awful lot of similarities in the way that the front ends work and things like that. So, um, with that under my belt, and a bit of time I spent tinkering on it several years ago, and then the biggest thing was picking up a second E10,000, which uh, I did that video, gee, I don't remember, four or five years ago now, where I brought that back, and it came with not only a complete E10K, but a huge swath of spare parts and uh, more importantly some working SSPs which is in fact the SSP that I'm using right now. I have it booted, I have it running, I have it ready, I haven't done anything with it other than realize the time of day clock is croaked and so I've managed to set the time through Solaris and made sure that I know my users and passwords. The machine itself though, well, this is where the fun begins. I have done a little bit of work already, but not a heap. I'll explain that in a second. So, this is the Sun E10,000. 30 inches wide, nearly 6 foot tall, 1800 pounds when fully stacked. Depending on your configuration, it ran from several hundred thousand to several million dollars. They were in the life in 2007. This is, in fact, the back of the machine. Even though these are fan tray zero and up, and then system board zero and control board zero and everything starts here, this is considered the back of the machine. I'm not quite sure why. However, as far as I'm concerned, it's the front of the machine because this is where I'm starting. I'm working on the zero side. Uh, and I've got the door switched around so I have the nice doors with the labels and with the uh, sub backpack that contains... Um, the anti-static kit, some manuals, some anti-static bags, a bunch of the labels for the cabling and things like that, as well as the torque wrenches for the processor modules, which are apparently incredibly hard to get. Now, between this machine and the other one, I ended up with two of them. But we have the power shelf here. We have the system boards, control board, the uh, center plane support board, fan trays, AC sequencers, and then in my system, I have a pair of D1000 uh, Sun disc boxes. They're 12 uh, three and a half inch discs a piece. I am not using them. They are big units, and I just don't want to spend the uh, power for them. What I do have is a Sun Storage D240, which sits in the middle here, and it's actually facing in the other direction. But you can see the SCSI cable. And that I half inched from, I think it was the Sunfire. 3800 and that system has two 18 gig SCSI discs and then on one side a DVD ROM drive and on the other side a DAT. I don't care about the DAT but it has discs in it and a CD-ROM so that I can do install and boot media which is very important. We have a pair of 10BT 3Com hubs so this system is of course designed to be incredibly redundant which means that it is designed uh, to have two SSPs 
The second one is optional. I'm not going to use it because, again, power. But you would have two hubs to two SSPs to two control boards to two center plane support boards, so on, so on, so on. So that if anything went out, you'd have a second. Actually, that's not true. The center plane support boards, you require both of them for the system to run. But, well, no. You require both of them for the system to boot, but it'll run without one if it kicks out while it's going. I'm still learning, but there's an awful lot of stuff into my head, uh, thanks to theory books like the uh, um, Sun Manager on E10,000 kit and uh, test booklet. booklet. So on the power shelf, we have four AC input boxes, let me hold the door open, and then the 48 volt power supplies. So power comes in from a pair of big cables which are tucked down on the floor right now that go to my 50 amp outlets, it's a 220 volt system. It comes into the AC input boxes which smooth and regulate the power, which then feed them into the 48 volt power supplies. Coincidentally, the Crate J98 uses the same supplies. These generate the main system voltage of 48 volts. Again, regulated, smooth, controlled. The control board is down here. The control board is the first thing that powers on when the system comes up after you bring all these boxes up and flip on the breakers. The control board has a spark light processor in it and everything's in PROM. So the system uh, powers on and it starts going through self-checks until it finally comes up. It takes about five minutes or so. It's not particularly fast. The SSP should already be running at this point. And what happens is they're connected by this 10BT network and they're busy talking to each other the entire time, or at least trying to. So once the system starts powering up and the center board starts coming up, or sorry, the control board is coming up, all of the fans are going full tit screen because the 24 volts that's generated for these guys comes from the control board. So everything's screaming like crazy. The ECSP is busy pinging the bus looking for the control board. The control board is still coming up and periodically pinging out looking for each other. The ECSP runs a whole buttload of daemons that not only have the standard system daemons like boot P, uh, RARP D, and boot paren D is the other big one that um, the sun systems use to bring each other up, uh, net boot, so on and so forth, but they also have the EDD, which is the event daemon, they have the OBP, which is the open boot system. They have the um, SNMPD, which they use to pull voltages and fan speeds, temperatures, all of that crap. Um, but then the CBE and the CBS and things like that, which is the control board event daemons and all of this stuff. So all this is running on the SSP and it's just waiting for when eventually the control board says, Hi, I'm here. And they start talking to each other. And when they uh, come up with a synchronized lock, all of a sudden the fans wind down a bit because they realize that it's not 3,000 degrees in here and everything's copacetic. At that point, the SSP now takes control. And from the SSP, you can power on the individual systems. So you will start with the AC sequencers. The control board has four DB9 ports here, five DB9 ports actually, and each one can go to one of these remote power controllers. This shelf can fit all five. I only have two of these boxes. And you have an in and an out, and then a um, DB9 that goes to the APC sequencers. So what you will do is you power your disk shelves and all of these sorts of things off the AC sequencers. And they live in this 19-inch rack up here. And this is just a standard 19-inch rack. So from the ACSP, you say, power on the AC sequencer box, zero. So it comes through the um, remote power controller which daisy chains various sequencers. You can have one per controller, you can have multiple. If you had um, I.O. cabinets that would hang off this that might have hundreds or thousands of disks, you would have a whole bunch of these sequencers daisy chained together. And so the RPC tells the sequencer to bring itself up and then the sequencer will bring devices on in order so that you don't have that massive inrush current, you're not popping breakers all over the place because you just fired up 300 hard disks or something like that. I'm not using any of this because all I've got is the D240 and the hubs 
in fact, I'm only powering one hub right now because I don't have a second DCSP and, well, redundancy is not really a problem for me. So I have a um, run-of-the-mill off-the-shelf uh, power strip on the far side that's plugged into the wall. So I just flip that on and both these fire up. Once your disk boxes and sequences and everything are online, then you would bring up power to the control board, or sorry, to the center plane support board. So that's this little guy up here, and it really only has two jobs. The first is it generates the system clock for the center plane, and it provides the voltage, the 5 volts and the 3.3 for the center plane. The center plane is covered in dozens of ASICs, which handle the gigabus, and it has uh, four 48-bit address buses and two 72-bit data buses which can be combined and broken apart depending on what kind of state the system's in, if it's damaged, if it's fully functioning. And the address buses work on a crossbar so you can directly connect this system board to that system board or whatever. And so those data buses and address buses then get uh, directly assigned. So the center plane support board brings the center plane online. You do need both of them to bring the center plane up. So I have the other center plane support board on the far side. There is no second control board. There are no other system boards in my system right now. And in fact, I'm not even going to use most of these because it appears that the domain that's set up is only set for three boards. That's okay. Once the center plane is up and configured, so uh, it gets configured by the SSP deciding what kind of state the system's in. Does it have all of the address buses and data buses? Has there been damage? Are any of the ASICs uh, out of spec? Something like that. Is there any voltages that are out of spec? And it can bring parts of the bus up. It decides what the best um, use of the bus is going to be, what the most optimal way of configuring the bus is. Decides that, configures the center plane board, and then you can start bringing up the system board. So in my case, I'd only bring up 0, 1, and 2, because this is what my domain is set for right now. I haven't got far enough to figure out how to configure a fresh domain, so maybe we'll bring up an entire side. I really, really don't think, even with careful power sequencing, I can bring up the entire system with all 64 processors and 64 node boards. I just don't think I have a high enough service. I have 100 amp servers to the house because I live rural. It would probably make it, but then that's if I shut the house off or something like that, which sounds cool. My wife would not be thrilled. So, we'll start by just bringing up part of the system, seeing if we get it running, and then we can add and remove boards as we go, because of course one of the wonderful things about a system like this is you can add and remove system boards as you see fit. <clears throat> you need another processor. Pull the board out, slap the processor in, put the board back in, tell uh, Solaris to start using the board again. Once the system boards are up, then you can do a bring up from the SSP. Bring up is the name of the command. And so that does a basic diagnostic check, makes sure all of the devices are there, configures the devices, and then uploads the open boot prom from an EEPROM image on disk. It uploads it via the JTAG bus, which comes through the control board to all of the systems, and loads open boot on the system. It'll fire up open boot, and then it's running a, a boot prompt ready to go. You connect it from the SSP, and then it's just like any other sub, more or less. That's the theory. Um, we will see. What I've done so far is I wired up the D240 because that's what I want to use for the install media. I do have a Linux Jumpstart setup, but I have it only for Solaris 8, and I'd like to try and use Solaris 10, which should work on this, I think. Um, so I'm just going to install off DVD. I'm not in a great rush. I have it cabled up here. What I did discover is that all of the SCSI controllers on all of these boards that I already had in this system, this being my first E10K, had um, LVD differential. And so that wasn't a heap of use to me because this is a single-ended box. And so I had to go hunting, and by pure luck I managed to find an old FAS-style um, SCSI controller with an Ethernet port built in. So there's my single-ended SCSI. So that's the modification I've done so far. I have my Ethernet wired off the hub 
to the control board and then from this to the SSP. The SSP has a main onboard controller and then it has a quad fast Ethernet controller, which I have one around here somewhere, which has uh, four Ethernet ports on it. This one's Krog, so I'm not too worried about touching it. I have three of those connected, not for any good reason, but just because I had a couple spare cables. And then I have one going from my 10BT hub down to one in the QFE on the main system board. I've got a second SCSI controller down here, that's one of the differentials, so I just have to know to avoid that. And the other two modules, the other two system boards, have nothing in them. Where to begin? Well, um, I know enough to know that the control board works. I can power the system on. Oh, I replaced one of the 48 volt supplies. It was um, not coming in spec, and so the system had rejected it. Thankfully, I have about 30 spare power supplies, so I just marked it and um, replaced it, and the replacement is good. So I've got, well, they're not green lights, they're orange lights, but they're orange lights everywhere. I have the uh, controller board. Control board, I know, is good. It's throwing green lights. And the rest of it, well, we'll have to see. Um, I'm not going to use a sequencer, so I don't have to worry about that. I know the D240 powers on. I don't actually know if the DVD ROM drive works or if the um, internal disks work. The disks should be fine. I have, as I've missed about before, horrific luck with DVD and CD SUM drives. So hopefully it works. Anyways. I think we'll leave it here. I know it was quick and I ran through it quick, but I'll try and burst this one out relatively swiftly. The only other interesting news is I think I may have mentioned last time that I finally have decent internet to the house. I uh, have a guy who lives north of here, it's become a good bud of mine, that runs 802.11 uh, Air Max off the radio tower. And I now have a TV tower in my tree line, and I'm able to talk to it, so I have... The moment it's only 15 megasecond at home, but that's enough, because I don't really need that fast. It'll ramp up higher than that, but I'm good with that. Beyond that, however, I've got a couple of the Ubiquiti nano beams that's firing from the shed back to the wireless in the house, and boy, do those suckers work beautifully. And so I finally have Ethernet and Internet in my shed. I've got it coming in in the far corner here, and then I've got an Ethernet cable that runs up and over the ceiling, and a uh, gig switch that's hanging on the wall right now. So, I could, well, first the ability to read documentation in here and things like that and walk back to the house it is so nice. Uh, but it means that I can upload video straight from here. I could even maybe do a live session from here, possibly. The thing that I'm kind of looking for is I can power this thing on and I can leave it run for the day. It would cost me a hundred bucks, but I can do it. And maybe you guys can log into it. Want to try a VMS on a real VAX? I could plug that guy in and we can run a VAX. Or the 6800 or maybe eventually the Cray, one of the SGIs, whatever. So I think I'm kind of looking forward to that personally. Maybe that doesn't interest anybody else but me. Uh, my friend who runs the internet provider went to university where they had one of these guys and his uh, favorite moment is that he fork bombed one of them to death, which... Oh god, I'm giving them ideas. I'd really prefer if you wouldn't do that. Anyways, if you have been, thank you very much for watching. I shall get something out to you hopefully relatively soon and we will fire the system up get the SSP talking to it, and see how far we can get through the boot process. I am certain a bunch of these devices, CPU, RAM, whatever, is bad, so we'll have to see in what kind of state it's in. Thank you very much. You guys take care of yourselves.